Rated. First of all, I just want to mention we have no brochures here this evening. We are in such a liquid situation that we are not producing any. In our opinion, it'd just be a waste of money because this, this business is developing rapidly and our networks mean that it's just not worth, not worth the expense on the shareholder base. First of all, we go on to the disclaimer. Um, by all means, if anybody wants me to leave it up to go through it, they can. Alter <laughs> Alter alternatively, uh, it is available on our website if you want to read through it. You're all more than welcome to. So, Pack the Metals, Ethos, deliver our strategy. What we say is what we do. A strong commitment across the Panther Metals to engage with the market and shareholders, such as evenings like this, and aligning our strategy with our shareholder base. Company strategy. We have focused on creating a foundation within the exploration sector, utilize our extensive international networks that we'll go through a little bit more in a little while, and also working directly with our partners. The opportunity. In the exploration sector, we've seen, for many years, we've seen underinvestment. I think that's generally recognized by the market. We've seen some of the majors come in and re-energize their exploration teams they got rid of over the last few years. We've seen real danger supply issues across many, many commodities, copper, nickel, gold, as we move into 2020s. And this is where the opportunity lies with Panther Metals. We are seeing opportunities on, what do you say, Nick, weekly, daily basis. Yep. And within us, it's about siphoning through these opportunities and how we look at executing on the deals. But why Panther Metals? On the free, free financing that took place in March last year, we raised 300,000. We were told that next cash shells never do anything. And I think that we can safely say that we've proved everybody wrong. I'm going to try and get rid of this. So we've proved that wrong in what we've done. July last year we announced a DD process on our Canadian asset. August we appointed Kerim Senna as our chairman, non-exec. In September we completed the Canadian asset. October we done our initial site visit. We done work on site in November. December we appointed Kate Aisling to the board. Kate is a financial controller. She's absolutely top class. We also announced in December the due diligence on Parthian Resources in Australia that we've since completed, announced on the 18th of March this month. January, we had a board reshuffle. It was felt that we needed, we we're a London business, and Mitch, who's based in Canada, he moved aside to COO. I took up the role of CEO. We're very much a business that is a team every single one of us. We all work together, <coughs> we're engaged daily, and this is where the strength in this business lies. Where are we at now? And what are we doing at this moment in time? You'll note that we're not at any of the investor shows, UK investor show or master investor. You'll also notice a lack of noise via interviews, uh, press releases, but it's critical as well that we get that message out, our message out to the investment community. But it's my view that at the moment as a business, that money is better spent investing in, that, in assets and in what we're seeing and what opportunities we're seeing. And the reason we're seeing those opportunities is because of the team that we've got. Internally, we have a model and we have a very, very good model. But we're not going to release that to market. We're not going to talk directly about that at the moment. And the reason that is, is because if we release that news, if we tell people what we're doing, what we're looking for, anybody we try to engage with, the value of those assets is going to just increase. Because they know <coughs> that's the type of asset, as a business, we're looking for. So that's why at the moment you won't necessarily see the absolute engagement from this business that you would sometimes expect. But it's with really good reason. And that's us adding value for our shareholder base. It's just the common sense approach at this stage of the business's life. Keep Panther on your radar. We've already shown that we can deliver value-enhancing projects. Nick will run through our maiden project in Canada, 
and it'll also run through those results and he will show that. We have also shown we can expand our network to directly influence the markets that we're looking at. We've, we've well known that we're looking in Australia and you'll also see by the, the deal that we've done with Parfum Resources, <coughs> and I will go through that in a little while, as to why we've done that deal and the advantages that brings to the company and as a direct result that brings to our shareholder base. Board of Directors, myself, Darren Hazelwood, Mitchell Smith, COO, Kerim, Nick, Simon, Kate. Myself, on our structure, foundation, team building, energy, business growth. Kerim has got exploration experience, grassroots through to profitable mind development via his CEO of Ariana Resources. Mitch Smith is high level corporate network, very experienced in ex executing strategies. He's also got a good eye for us out in Canada. Then we've got Nick, exceptionally experienced geologist, 14 years, competent person for dual code, aim briefs, aim rules, Kate Aisling, financial controls, corporate finance. We've got Simon Rothschild, IPOs, company restructurings, acquisitions. So what have we got? What do we offer as a business at this stage to anybody looking in the exploration market? We offer exploration success, production success, vast networks, financial controls, IPOs, acquisitions, business growth, all within one package. This is all within our team. I do like it when it does that. <coughs> Corporate structure. I own 8.1% of the business. Kerim, as a result of the Parfian deal, he now owns 5.6%. Market cap, 3.4 million. SI, our corporate brokers. Peter House Capital, our also advisor. You'll see an issue, we've got 615 million shares. We, when we refinanced the company last March, we had in total issue 497 million. We've increased the shareholder check about, by about 19.6%. We're not issuing stock just for the sake of it. We're issuing it where we see value. We're not about confetti. We never will be. I think now I move over to Nick to talk about our Canadian project in Schreiber. Okay. Thanks, Darren. So as, as, as Darren alluded to, I'm, I'm a non-executive director. Um, I'm also a geologist uh, with, with various uh, AIM. Um, private um, companies and I'm also a consultant um, with the SRK group. Um, I've been involved with, with Panther Metals since uh, the, the conception of the idea of taking a, a palm oil business from Malaysia and restructuring it to focus on, on, uh, on the exploration sector. Obviously we're all here because we, we, we're, we know about exploration and we know that you have to, at the, at the beginning, you just have to go where the rocks are. Most of the deposits <laughs> in the world that were easy to find in safe jurisdictions have been found. Leadenhall Street, where we're sitting now, used to be a, a, the, the centre the center of the, the North uh, England uh, lead industry. Uh, that's all gone now. We went over to Africa as British people, down to Australia and over to Canada, and our expertise basically went out in front of us. Since the beginning of, of Panther, we decided that we were going to try and concentrate our efforts on safe jurisdictions where there was a real possibility of creating value. <coughs> so that's, that's how we came to be in Canada. Canada, as you can see, is, is the number one ranked uh, mining investment attractive country um, according to the Fraser Institute. The Fraser Institute uh, is, uh, runs a survey every year with um, top uh, executives and decision makers in the mining industry to gauge their appetite for, for, for risk and, and, and jurisdiction. Uh, so the sorts of questions that they ask is, you know, where, ideally where would you be and what's your experience of working in, in the various countries. And as you can see, uh, Canada's come on top and the other, the other country which we uh, decided to focus on from the very beginning um, Australia is, is number two. I won't read out here, you can see, you can see why Canada's rated up high, high there. You know, it's a democratic jurisdiction. Um, it's also uh, well endowed in minerals. So now kind of coming into, 
Canada itself, the Fraser Institute has also um, split up the country by, by province. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, ranked number one there is Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan is a destination for people interested in uranium, <coughs> potash and salt. Two is uh, Quebec. Quebec is really perspective for base metals, uh, for gold, for nickel, uh, <coughs> French speaking. Um, we're interested in that area. Uh, number three is Ontario. Ontario is where we've got our first project, the Bear Lake project. So Ontario is Canada's uh, most uh, prolific uh, mining destination. There's currently 38 active mines there. It's the, the largest producer of gold and nickel in Canada. It's got over, I think, 20, over 25,000 people employed directly in the mining industry and, and probably four times that in, in, in services around it. So it, it, has a, it has a great network and it's a great place to, to actually uh, start, start in this game. And it's worth saying as well that they've, they've also <coughs> recently converted their, what was an outdated uh, staking system to, to an electronic uh, registration system, which means that we can actually go and uh, file for land packages, um, submit uh, our requests for, for, for work and submit our reports all online, which makes it uh, easier to do given that we're not in, in, in Canada physically. Uh, so, Big Bear location. Here we've got Ontario. Uh, this is where our license is. We'll zoom in. Okay, so this is the Bear Lake. Basically, we're fundamentally in the right location. We are on the eastern end of the, the Schreiber Hemlo Greenstone Belt. I'll talk a little bit about what, what Greenstone Belts are in a minute. Um, so we're on the, on the western end. On the opposite end, about 95 kilometers away, sits Barrick's Hemlo Mine. To date, that has, that has produced over 22 million ounces of gold. It's still ongoing. Um, also, a little bit closer to us, along that same trend, um, Naranda had their Golden Giant mine. That closed in 2006, but was in operation from uh, the mid-80s through to that time, and that produced over 6 million ounces of gold. Uh, a little bit closer to home, We've got a joint venture between GTA and Balmoral Resources. There are um, about 10 kilometers in this direction. They have an inferred um, NI43101 compliant resource of 0.8 million ounces and 0.39 million ounces on indicated. Uh, they just put out a drill uh, release on the end of February. Um, 124 meters at, at uh, one gram a ton. Obviously, you know they, they, they're compositing that sl slightly strangely, um, but it, but it's still coming out at, at over 11 meters at at six meters or so. So so we've got real economic intersections in the vicinity. Um, there are other pro pro project which is Duck Lake, which is just just by here. They've um, put out release on that. They have five meters at, at just under six grams per ton as well. Um, that's all on gold. Just to the just to the north up here, we've got an ASX listed company, which is Superior Lakes. They have actually got the rights to a mine that, that went a uh, uh, zinc mine, which went into. Uh, which was mothballed because of the, the low zinc price, but they're currently trying to get that back up and running. They've got a, a resource there of, of 2.17 million tons at 17.7% zinc, which makes that uh, Canada's highest grade uh, zinc deposit at the moment. And they're, they're quite set on actually uh, uh, getting that into production. Now, very interestingly, they, they hold the ground immediately to that side of us and around here. And they've put out news releases saying that they're holding that ground because they think it is perspective for zinc. 
Okay, so giving you a little bit of history, Darren's touched on it, but a little bit of history on, on how we came to be at the Big Bear project. So we, yeah, we'd already decided we liked Canada and we liked Australia. Um, we put out uh, feelers into our network and um, we're introduced to a group of sp prospectors who had uh, this ground on this particular um, greenstone belt. Um, so we met them, uh, initially started talks with them last summer, and then as Darren said, we, we, we closed in, in early September. What attracted us to, to this project was that, although it's early stage, there has been some work there previously. So the, the prospectors had uh, had a, an earning agreement with a Canadian junior back in 2010-2011. Uh, they had conducted a, um, a geochemical survey and a, um, a grand, grand mag survey on say about a quarter or so of the license area and they had discovered some really interesting uh, uh, anomalies but what they hadn't managed to do before they ran out of money and subsequently kind of folded out of it was join the dots so we've got the initial, we've got the initial kind of uh, targets here but no one has actually gone back uh, what happened when they ran out of money, it reverted to the prospectors and then the prospectors sat on it for a while and then they came and um, spoke to us. So you can see the, the results there, those, those, those first ones in those various areas, those were generated by, those, by, by that work and some, some work inter intermediate. Uh, the historical bulk, bulk sampling was uh, at a, uh, a trial mine <coughs> site, the Scriber Pyramid Mine which is in the bottom of our area. And that was worked between the wars um, by, by local people. At the end of that time, uh, a bigger company came in and took a, a bulk sample. And as you can see, they, they got 150 tonnes there at 17.6 grams per tonne. Uh, and also, we've got in, within our area, we've got the historical <coughs> drill intersections. They're from around the late 1960s or so, when there was regional exploration for, um, for the uh, the zinc and copper, um, which that, that's, that work was all timed in with the, the discovery up at, at Pit Lake that the Australians are trying to, trying to work with at the moment. So, um, as Darren said, we went over to, uh, to the site in um, early October. We met with uh, various stakeholders there, um, with contractors, and we were there mainly to, to, to form a view on what work we were going to well, undertake. We were aware that, that there were certain, um, uh, there was a certain amount of work that we had to do um, before the spring came um, that, was, that was due because the, the prospectors that had the licenses before us hadn't, hadn't fulfilled their needs. So we were kind of keen to, to get off to the right start and, and, and do some work before the snow came. So, so we went out there and we planned an orientation program we uh, managed to get a, a team of guys out there in early November, just before the, before the snow came. And we set up five orientation grids over areas of interest that had been de de delineated from that historical work. Um, we conducted 150 soil samples and we took 40, 40 rock samples. And the rock samples were from outcropping um, quartz veins and rocks that looked interesting. I should say that the, the lay of the land here is uh, thick forest, um, undulating sort of peaks and bogs in, in the valleys and, and rocky crags sort of in between. One of the most interesting things that we've got about this particular area is this 18 grams per tonne soil anomaly. That hasn't been followed up yet, so that's, that's going to be a target for this coming, coming work this summer. Okay, so coming on to like, what we found, we, we got the results back in December, we reported them in, uh, in January once we'd had a chance to, to assimilate and um, interpret what was going on. We've, out of those initial five um, grids that we surveyed, we had uh, two areas that returned the vein samples of, of one to five grams per ton, um, and we had four areas that were actually returning samples above five grams per tonne. 
And interestingly, on an area that we haven't initially outlined during, during um, our, our first visit, um, the prospectors uh, discovered this vein, um, 50, 50 metres exposed, and they, they uh, took samples at either end of it, and as you can see, we got pretty exceptional results there. So that will factor into, into the work that we're planning this year. Okay, which brings us on to, on to here. So this just gives you a, a bit of an uh, an overview of the, that was the soil grid that was originally um, taken um, in 2010-2011. Um, down this right bottom end, this is the work that, and here, 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 and here. These are the, these are the grids that we had set up um, and, and completed in, in November. And so off the back of that, we've identified areas that we want to follow up on. Um, this is the little bare area. This is the scriber pyramid area with that, where the, this point here is where that 100 and, um, 150 box sample was taken. These two points here relate to this, this interpreted vein where we've got the 100 grams per tonne samples that we just collected in November. And then this is the big bear area, which now, apart from the work that we had done in November, has never been explored. As far as we can see from the historical records, no one has ever touched this ground before. Uh, back on the geology side, we are on the greenstone belt. So what you can see in here is greenstone. Um, and apologies to any geologists in the, in, the, in the room, but I'll just give you a little overview on what greenstone is. So greenstone is the, the remnants of ancient volcanoes and associated sedimentary basins intruded by, by granite batholiths. They were situated in places that um, might have once upon a time been like, uh, if you can imagine, where Japan is now. You've got places where there's subduction, and then there's uh, volcanoes coming up through, through the sea, and you've got basins, back arc basins, behind um, shallow seas. This was about, in our area, we're talking about 2.5 to 3.2 billion years ago that these, these systems were active. Since then, they've been buried deeply down, uh, they've been heated up, squashed and pulled, metamorphosed, and what, <coughs> why it's called greenstone? It's because there's a lot of chloride in the, in the mafic and ultramafic rocks that actually makes them look a bit green, so it's kind of a simple idea. But these kind of date back to a time where it's thought that the earth was quite a lot hotter than it is today. There was a lot more um, circulation of metals. It's quite possible that nowadays most of the gold is in the core. When the earth was hotter, you had bigger convection currents and was circulating uh, those, those dense metals a lot more than it is today. And so that's possibly a reason why, why these greenstone belts are more endowed with gold. And, and it's worth saying that as far as we know, there's no, there's no comparative sort of geological environment today. So if you're looking for this type of mineralization, you need to go and find the greenstone belts. And there's lots of them in Ontario. So, just to finish off, uh, we have now got a, uh, a permit to, to undertake work in the larger Big Bear area. That will allow us to do trenching, clearing, um, soil sampling, um, and drilling um, over the next three years. Uh, we have also started <laughs> engaging and, uh, and are in friendly conversations with the local First Nation community. Um, I am very keen to get them involved in, in, the, in the work going forward. Uh, from the onset, I think it's important that exploration companies uh, start off on the right foot. So we're very conscious of that. So what we're planning to do, as soon as the snow melts, which will be around um, May time, is get back on the ground. We've got uh, soil geochemical um, grid samples over those, those larger areas that we just identified here. So I want to concentrate on these areas. We'll do ground geophysics as well. We'll do, we'll do trenching on the anomalies 
and uh, with the objective of defining drill ready targets. Um, we're also keen to look at new technology. Uh, there are quite a few people now using um, drones to collect airborne geophysics um, very cost effectively compared to fixed wing or, or, or heliborne systems. So we'll see if we can we can utilize that um, and that should actually help fast track the work we're doing. Um, and I'll pass back you to, to Darren to yep. talk about Aussie. Yeah, okay. Right, thanks a lot for that, Nick. Uh, that's fantastic. Right, just very quickly, I'll just discuss, uh, I'll just mention, we, I, I touched on earlier, we've just taken over a private company, Pathing Resources. Why have we done that? Uh, it gives us direct access into the Australian investment community. It also enables us to see a lot better quality of product project out in Australia that we're seeing into us now. We are totally set up on a corporate level in Australia now as well, which that takes time and money. We have that within it. We also have a subco that's based in Hong Kong. That was previously owned and controlled by Parthia. That comes within the package. We also have something that um, is totally unique to Panther within that. Uh, it's, we own 100% of this database, but unfortunately, I can't talk about it. Um, but I can, the only thing I can say is there is not a company in the world that could have this. Not BHP Bilton, not Rio Tinto, not Tech. We are the only companies in the Western world that own this database. However, that's as much as I can say. I think it's, like it's, it's really weird we're saying that Parfum was set up to, 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 to drive yeah. this, the, this data work. It so. was, yeah, yeah. And it cost about half a million to put this together But at this stage. But that's us, ladies and gentlemen. I'll just cut it a little bit short. Um, we have got an ex we've now got an accelerated growth opportunity in Australia due to this takeover and also what else it brings into our business. So thank you very much. Anyone got any questions?